The views and opinions expressed by the following program and its participants are solely their own opinions and do not represent the opinions of PMS Broadcasting and their respective stations. This program is brought to you as a community service of BAF Insurance. The views, opinions, and advice expressed by guests on this show are those of the guests and do not reflect the views, opinions, and advice of BAF Insurance. For medical advice, please visit your medical professional. Your health, your wealth, your health, your wealth, your health for life. Your health, your wealth is brought to you by BAF Insurance. Your health or priority. I'm free to live my life, yeah. Free to be me, yeah. The way I want to be. Doing the things that I want to do. Welcome back. Each and every day, we uh, try to give you great information and news that you can use about your health. Compliments of our friends over there at BAF Insurance. And uh, today, I have with me a special guest. Um, you know what? I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about his field of medicine. And then we're going to have a frank and honest conversation about how and why you should be and eat healthier Introduce yourself, Doc. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. My name is Dr. Rogelio Rivas. I am the Corporate Vice President of Baptist Health International. Uh, we are the division that runs all international health care for Baptist Health South Florida system. And uh, been with Baptist Health for about 13 years now. We've been involved with uh, taking care of up to maybe 14,000 patient visits a year. Wow. From different countries, 93 countries. So it's uh, it's a pretty it's pretty nice when now in Miami we have things available that mm-hmm. we didn't have available before. Right. And people had to leave Miami uh, to go seek health care elsewhere. And now we have uh, we came to talk a little bit about everything we have now available in Miami. It, exactly. And Miami is really kind of a hub for a lot of movement. Um, of course, you know, it's one of the busy, busiest airports in the U.S. And it's really connected to, I want to say, the gateway to a lot of places, whether you're from London, whether you're from the Caribbean, you know, Central or South America. It really is a one kind of hodgepodge of everything, a lot of cultural diversity and also um, medical fields con- coincide right in there. Um now, Baptist Hospital, people are not new to it here. Uh, we have heard, and I know people who have gone there and sought treatment there for many, many moons, but it's constantly growing. Tell me about some of the expansion that you guys have been doing. Well, <clears throat> number one, Baptist Health has had a commitment with, uh, with the, the people of Cayman Islands for a long time. I mean, we were here back in the day even. I think we were first boots on the ground here after Hurricane Ivan right, to try to help out. So it all started... Uh, back in the day of, of our, our CEO, uh, Brian Keeley, at that time, um, he's, now, he's now part of our board, but he used to be our CEO. He just recently stepped down. And he believes in, he believed in Cayman Islands and how, how to seek help. I think Baptist started as one hospital, mm-hmm. and now it's a system. And so it's actually 12 hospitals that go all the way from the Florida Keys all the way to Palm Beach and Boca Raton. Wow. Uh, with over 200-plus outpatient centers. Uh, so it's a, it's a large system. It's got now about 28,000 employees. Excellent, excellent. And the reason, reason I, I wanted to kind of allude to that is to show that you guys have been committed to the communities in various aspects, not just the South Miami, South, South yeah. Florida, but also heading up into Central and also into the Keys because we do have a lot of students, a lot of parents who do a lot of traveling throughout Central Florida. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the school systems, they have a lot of college and also high school uh, magnet schools and things of that nature. So it's really good that parents and, and our community here know that they have a viable system that they can say hey to their daughter son or whatever i know you're going to be taken care of over there go to this particular system and you're good to go you you hit on something so important because we believe uh especially during covid Mm -hmm. we we really found out you know 
our community is everybody that's around us, right? Miami's community is, is all the Caribbean, it's Central and South America. It's, it's our community. That, that's why I love living in Miami mm-hmm. because you can walk out and you can eat any type of food you want at any time. Right. Um, but but uh, the fact that we are uh, uh, very close by in case of an emergency, I mean, you have, you have really good health care in Cayman Islands. Uh, we have our friends at, uh, at the HSA, our friends at Doctors Hospital. Mm-hmm. You have the new Shetty Hospital. So right. there's, there's good medicine now in Cayman Islands. always has been. <clears throat> but but the volume sometimes does not allow the volume that you need to sustain some kind of high level stuff right sometimes it's just not it's not economically feasible right and so to know that you have a tertiary facility that's available in case kind of like a fire you know yeah. in case emergency break glass exactly we we're here and then not just that but teaching and helping right so uh many other institutions you know maybe might be in that you know, send me this, send me that, give me, give me, give me. And we, we try to give back to the community. I mean, we have here uh, our, our, our PET CT center. We have a diagnostic center here called Baptist Health International Cayman Islands. Right. Uh, we have our, our, our team that's administrative office that's based out of there. And so we have a strong belief that, that Cayman Islands is a strong hub for us. And then from there, many folks can possibly later on actually in the future, use Cayman Islands as a form of medical tourism. Uh, but there's certain things that you can do, and there's certain things that, that even us, that it took us a long time. Baptist Health, now going back to your original question, you know, what is it we're doing that's innovative? What's the new stuff that's going on? Let's just start on, on Cancer Institute. Our Cancer Institute is the only place in the whole wide world that has every type of radiation machine, radiation oncology machine, all the dri- different machines whether it's protons, MRI Linux, CyberKnife, GammaKnife, every single one of wow. them is under one roof. So, so it's all, and if you need to talk to, it's all covered. You don't need to go five the, hours here, no. airlift someplace else. The radiation oncologist team that's there, they are the ones that know how to, how to actually review a case and decide what is the best machine for the patient. Mm-hmm. And Unfortunately, some places you might only have on island one machine. Yeah. So then and I've I've been to places that don't even have that. Correct. So so yep. you know it's great to know that we have that within our and, and folks I, I say because Cayman is so centrally located within an hour we can we can be someplace that has that kind of sophistication and also that kind of technology that we may not have access to anywhere else in the world. And then. As you move forward, uh, how do you how do you continue? Because you can start a treatment over there, but now you have a level of healthcare here that, whether it's the HSA or, or doctor's hospital or, or, or any other facility, mm-hmm. you can actually share the protocols to what to follow here. Okay, I've always said that I you know we believe you know fifty percent of all medical care is psychological. If the person's not with their family, with their with their loved ones, and and back in their home in their home area where people can visit, we believe that's the best source of treatment. So whatever we can, if we can get a patient back home and if that person can actually <clears throat> be able to continue their treatment back home, that's, that's, a, that's a win-win. I, I think that's really great to hear because over the years, people have always had that. And, and I'll be honest, we, we like to have a frank conversation with my, with my listeners. They have that bad taste of big business, yeah. you know, um, medical have become big business, farm has become big business, but you really tone it back down and bring it down to that grassroots level of we're here for you. And, and I like the conversation of an understanding that, you know what, you exist to better us. And that makes it so much more understanding. Yeah, I, th- I think, you know, as an international team, you know, what is, it, what is your foundation? What do you believe in? I mean, we're all about, it's about the relationship and service. Mm-hmm. How do we, how do we uh, service and help people out um, on the cardiac side? Now, what we have in cardiac now is unbelievable. We have uh, last year we had Dr. McGinn. We we are here to be part and participate in the Cayman Heart Conference for the Heart Fund. Okay. And basically, last year we brought a doctor. It's a, it's a cardi- cardiac uh, surgeon, and he does a bypass through the ribs. Does not open a chest. What? And so he can do a four vessel bypass on an 80 year old male, and that person can then go home in four or five days, and they're playing golf in two weeks. 
That's and incredible. Then my dad had, you know, may mm -hmm. he rest in peace. My dad had a, a bypass many years ago, didn't die of that. But in, in 1992, and he had a sternum that was up, cracked open, had a four vessel bypass. Mm -hmm. They put it back together. But then for, for the rest of his life, he would always complain of either the scar tissue here mm -hmm. or of the pains, like when it would rain and stuff, it would pain right. the pain of the joint pain from, from kind of like osteoarthritis from the sternum. The fact that they can do that through the, through the side through side the ribs, of the ribs, it's amazing. And, and, and folks, you got to think of it. The ribs, uh, if you if you you know a little bit of, you're talking less than an inch and a half. Yeah, the anatomy. That right? that that's pretty pretty precise and incredible. And then Dr. Wynn that was coming here today uh, is is going to be here for the Cayman Heart Fund, uh, for the conference. Uh, he's actually our our chief medical executive for the Miami uh, Cardiac and Vascular Institute. And he's actually the director of all minimally invasive cardiac surgery. Mm -hmm. And what what he has done is is brought doctors that are now another level for Baptist Health. You know, you go from being bread and butter mm -hmm. to now state of the art. Right. And so now you have the bypass surgeon that does what he ha does. Now you have Dr. Wynn, who's a tremendous specialist in aortic val valvular surgery which they can go through the inside endovascular under the skin. Okay. They can come in through the sides, through the ribs, and, right. open and fix a valve. Or if they have to, they can open whichever it takes. But more, more and more is done minimally invasive, which means less complications for the patient. Exactly. And then less time in the hospital. And then less time in the hospital means less chances of many other things happening. Mm -hmm. And again, whenever you can do something minimally invasive, same thing better with, recovery time you, everything you don't open the sternum again right? right and then now dr dr Wynn brought like three or four other doctors but now we have actually a doctor by the name of dr goreshi who's just specializes in aortic aneurysms so an aneurysm the aorta is the main the main blood vessel and right. everything comes out of it right? Mm -hmm, right so as it's ascending going up the thorax it feeds everything into the to the heart level, to the top, to the carotids, yeah. that, to your brain. Uh, literally, it's the main highway. Folks, th think of it as 95 South go right. <laughs> going up. That is right. Right. So now this, this, this doctor is actually has been able to uh, do new things that has never been seen before, like being able to, normally you would have to connect that patient to a, a, a machine, Right while you're doing whatever fixing, bypassing you're doing on the aorta, the aneurysm is like a bubble that's going to burst. Right. And you got to fix that bubble. you got to put a stent. So you're moving everything. You're moving everything around. you gotta, you got to control the heart, stop the heart. you got to cool down the body. So there's a cool down procedure that normally it's an hour and a half long for start the cool down to start and a, an hour and a half to, to like stop the cool down, right? That's three hours of extra anesthesia. Okay. So now... He has a methodology that they never have to go into cool down, which wow. means less anesthesia, older person, less situations with memory loss, anything like that, mm -hmm. disorientation. Right. And we just, we brought in, we just transferred a patient from Central America. Nobody gave us a chance that he was going to live. And uh, he had a very large uh, aneurysm and Dr. Goreshi is his name. An an again, another Dr. Wynn story. Dr. Mm -hmm. Wynn is the leader. And he brought in this new docs, and, and they're doing an amazing job. The wow. fact that we have now what we have in cancer care, in, in what is neurology care, so we have MNI, Miami Neuroscience, and we have it also in, 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 in uh, Boca Raton and Palm Beach. Okay. And then we have ortho care, cancer care, and cardiac care. It's just, we, we don't have to leave like we used to in the 80s, 90s when I grew up in Miami, you know, when I... Right. You get out of medical school, and then somebody gets really bad. You got to go to Boston. You got to go to New York. Yeah, yeah. You got to go to Houston. You know. Yeah. So they built something at Baptist Health that they they just wanted to build something so people didn't have to leave anymore. Exactly. Everything is kind of under one roof, and and if it's not there, it's close by. And if if we can't handle it, we know the people that we can refer to to get you to there. So exactly. All right, folks, we're going to take our first break. We're going to come right back. You're listening to BAF. Um, I'm giving you great information. I'm here with uh, Dr. Rogelio Ribes, um, all the way uh, from uh, Baptist Hospital, oh, which is really up the street from us. <laughs> we, we just say it's up the street from Skip us. Skip away. Skip away. We'll be right back. 
Last year, I was scheduled to have a major procedure. The hospital needed pre-approval from your health insurance. Um, I expected to have a lot of delays due to everything that was happening at the time. However, the AF was able to get my response in within a couple of days. This year, unfortunately, that procedure led me to have some complications and I was scheduled to have another emergency surgery. Um, that was on the weekend. Um, the hospital mentioned that they did not have an emergency contact for BAF, so I would need to try and wait or pay for it out of pocket. However, I did have Mike's phone number. I was able to phone him on a Saturday morning. He was able to reach um, the person that handles the emergency line. I was able to have my approval sent within the hour and have everything done and settled. Very thankful for BAF for their quick and speedy response. Thank you, BAF. BAF, that's BAF for life. Today on Be Well, Be Healthy for Life, Lady K helps us prepare for hurricanes with our health in mind. We all look forward to summer. Here in the tropics, that means more beach days, pool parties, family trips, and sadly, hurricane season. Now, we all have painful memories of hurricanes, but preparing for hurricanes is just a part of our routine. Making sure we have adequate supplies of non-perishable food, paper goods, and water stored is just a part of the drill. But there should be more to your hurricane preparations. The health-related items that are often forgotten until we sometimes need them. This hurricane season, don't get caught without critical supplies you may need to safeguard your health. Take inventory of your first aid supplies, bandages, cotton swabs, antibiotic and antifungal creams, alcohol swabs, painkillers, and other first aid supplies can be very important in the aftermath of a hurricane. It is easy to get injured while you're shuttering your house before or you're trying to clean up after a storm. Broken glass from a shattered window or maybe loose debris can cause cuts and scrapes. And please remember, avoid standing water. There are many unseen dangers such as ringworm and other fungi, as well as a variety of bacteria that can lurk below murky waters. It's helpful to have your first aid supplies already on hand, so stock up before the storm. Be sure you have adequate supplies of your prescription drugs. You want to fill prescriptions when they're due and then talk to your medical professional about your prescription drug supplies. You want to ensure that if a hurricane does threaten or hit, your health is not affected. Remember, power outages, flooded roads, and many other conditions may prevail after a storm. Stock up on healthy, non-perishable food items. Very often, the non-perishable food in our hurricane stocks are all canned meats and snacks that are loaded with salt and preservatives. Now, canned meats and, you know, such as corned beef and canned soups are quick and easy to prepare during and after a storm because they can be eaten straight from the can or they need very minimal cooking. I understand. But these items have a large quantity of fat and salt, which are bad for your health. So canned sardines and mackerel are a better choice because these are dark fish which have high protein and omega-3 fatty acids. Nevertheless, they too can contain unhealthy quantities of sodium. So please take the time to read and compare labels. The same goes for canned fruits, juices, and vegetables. Read the labels carefully. For canned fruit, Choose those are packaged in natural fruit juices without any added sugar. And then for canned vegetables, look for ones that are packaged in water instead of brine, which is super salty. Choose 100% natural juices if you can. And if that's not possible, then choose the ones with the lowest possible sugar content. And also consider diluting them when you're drinking. As a general rule, when you're buying canned goods, Always look for foods that are low sodium with no added sugars. These will be much healthier for you and your loved ones to eat while you try to ride out a storm. Let's talk about hurricane snacks. Everyone's favorite part of the hurricane supplies is the snacks, right? 
But instead of chips and sweet biscuits, consider some healthy snacks, such as dried fruit, nuts, and protein bars. But once again, read the labels. Even dried fruit can sometimes contain added sugars. And because dried fruit typically contains a larger concentration of sugar, this is caused, of course, by the dehydration process, you really have to be cautious. Nuts are always a good bet. And protein bars can be filling, and they offer sizable nutrition in small quantities. Hurricanes are a part of living in the tropics. We sadly can't avoid that threat that often looms over our islands. But what we can do is to be prepared as best as possible. So this hurricane season, we truly hope we can escape being hit by a storm, but let's still prepare with our safety and our health in mind. Be well, be healthy for life is brought to you by BAF Global Group. Remember, always consult your doctor before starting any new health and wellness regimen. BAF Global Group offers life, health, and general insurance, plus a full suite of financial solutions in the Bahamas, life insurance in the Turks and Caicos Islands, and affordable individual and group health insurance in the Cayman Islands. Visit us at mybafsolutions.com. I'm free to live my life, yeah, free to be me, yeah, the way I want to be, doing the things that I want to do, cause I'm living my life, hey, be a life, yes I'm living my life, hey, be a life, 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 yeah, has got you covered. Welcome back to BAF Insurance. Uh, Chuck Taylor here with you. Uh, Dr. Rebus is talking with me all the way from, um, I, I want to say right up the street uh, from Baptist Hospital over there in Miami. But I can't say Miami because it's a network, so I just want to say Florida because you guys cover a vast, South Florida. the whole of South Florida, yeah. that whole, whole gambit there. And um, we wanted to bring to you the importance and also I want to say the extension of how a client can benefit from being under your roof? Thank you for that question. Preventive care is mm -hmm. number one, the most important thing that we talked about. Uh, whether you're in Miami or whether you're in Cayman, we all have the same type of diet. We all do the same no-nos that we shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe it's, it's essential to what we, we have to do. And that's why the primary care physician is such an important component that we forget mm -hmm. in our lives to make sure that we are taking care of and moving forward. He's kind of like the quarterback to get everything started, to find out that, that ask those questions that you really like, you know, what's what you've been eating, you know, you're having pain here, and then able to refer it to a more specialized doctor or a specialized field, I should say. A lot of times we get so many of the questions come from the general physician side, internal medicine, family practice side, because... Uh, they're just generally inquisitive about our patients asking for this. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, you know, we find that, that a patient might have a certain condition and if we have a relationship and we can have a conversation with that doctor, sometimes a patient never has to leave. Right. Sometimes the answer is they're doing there, they're doing in Cayman exactly what we would be doing here, so you don't have to come to us. Right. It's it's really communication. Is communi key. Yeah, I was just about to say that we we we're, we're in a a small knit community, even though it's vastly yeah. and and you're you're hundreds, you know, a thousand miles away. You can really have that conversation and say, okay, well, what treatment are you doing? Right before you know, I remember the days and folks. I'm gonna date myself. I remember people traveling with their medical records. Oh, yeah. You know, and it was literally a stack of envelopes in Manila, and they was like, "What's that?" And I was like, "Oh, that's my medical records. That's my X-rays." And the film. They, they, yeah, they, they traveled with everything, everything. Yep. on the plane, but now it's literally a phone call and a Zoom away from having that conversation. You know, one of the cool things about working international, and and we have we have an amazing team that we we cover at least twenty five countries, uh, with with boots on the ground. And, and including Cayman Islands where we have the office. And so one of, one of the beauties of it is we were doing Zoom before it was cool. Uh -huh. And then we were doing actually transfer of medical, re of, of imaging 
through the cloud, we were actually one of the first ones in our system that were doing it. Then comes COVID. Uh huh. And all of a sudden, everybody who came to talk to me said, hey, we're going to try this new thing called Zoom. And I'm like, we've been doing that for four years. <laughs> yeah, the, it's the norm now. And that's the way we would communicate. We, we, we had to find a way of communicating with the doctors. I'm on call. We're on call a lot. Uh, uh, we get, I don't know, about 300 uh, air ambulance requests. And usually when they're calling us at night. 300? And they're not, usually when they're calling us at night and they're talking to me, it's not a social call, right? It's right. usually something that's really life threatening in trouble our team uh we have a tremendous team uh, our team does everything to to try to coordinate all the physicians that are necessary for that person's emergency and then connect doctors to doctors to talk and then have even the er staff from the from the charge nurse in the er or the icu nurses everybody's expecting that patient so there's no surprises obviously you know a, a human body is a surprise at any time anything can happen but but the actual, everybody knows and is expecting that patient. And I think more importantly, and I've been now going to be at Baptist for 13 years, but the one thing I was most impressed when I joined Baptist in 2011 is the fact that they don't just think about the patient. They actually care about the family because mm-hmm. they know somebody came and somebody's going to be taking care of that patient and, and, and find out. I mean, I, I, I'll never remember, I'll never forget, you know, Anna Basil who uh, was in charge of Cayman for many years, from still here, comes here, helps us a lot. Uh, she told me a story of an air ambulance of a patient. They had to air back the patient, went straight to the cath lab, went straight to bypass, saved his life. And then after everything's over, uh, she asked the family member, you know, do you need anything? How can we help you? And they said, well, we just jumped in the air ambulance. We don't even have clothes. Wow. And then Anna Basil did an Anna Basil and gets on the on the car and takes them over to to go shopping and get them clothes. I mean, who does? That's the little things. That, that that's that's really and, and folks, we 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 forget that there's a human element to it. That's right. That there there's another side to the story to it. Yes, we're talking medical. Yes, it's a life threatening. But then there are three other people that had to take that trip. Yeah. There, there are four other people that, that are concerned that needs to know what's going on. You know, you're, you're going into ER at an ungodly hour and coming out and you're not going to be able to talk. You're not going to be able to communicate what's going on. That's when the doctors and the nurses are able to do it. And also whoever's the, the worker. Yeah. Wh- whoever is the I, have a concierge. I, team. Yeah, concierge yeah. team. Yeah. You know, who, who, who is going to do that? That's unheard of. Even for elective procedures, uh, the team actually, we, ha- we have a, a group that just concentrates on not just taking care of the patient, getting the appointment for the patient, sending the itinerary for the patient, but when the patient arrives, picking them up at the airport, taking them to the hotel, mm-hmm. to and from the appointments. So it's, it's kind of like it's a complete service. And, and I, the part I love about what we do every day is, again, it's very relationship-based and it's not transactional. Okay. And, and just transactional medicine, sometimes it's become a business, right? Right. And, and so it becomes transactional. And, and that, this, these are the really nice things about what we do and how we do it that makes you feel good and, and proud of the pineapple every day. It, it's, it's a great, great thing when you, you know, I remember the days of they said, oh, you know, and folks, I'm going to date myself. Doctors used to do bedside manner classes, mm-hmm. you, you know, and they talk about, you know, h- how to relate to the person. That was lost for a for I want to say a quite a long time because of of that fast moving. Oh, we we got to get them in, got to get them out. But now it's like we need to find out what they need, what's going on. You know, I, I, where you guys, as you said, where are they staying? How are they getting up and down? You know, I'm flying into another country. I don't know how to travel in this country. I don't know which highways or whatever. You know, taxis are going to be expensive. So that is really a great great feeling to know that you're being taken care of in that manner on the grounds of baptist maine on kendall and 89th we actually uh built a hotel it's it's a hilton hotel on the on the premises <laughs> and so it's for specifically to help patients that are uh with chronic uh, chronic illnesses that might need extended stuff and and, mm-hmm. and so there's even uh, a, a special rate that we do for our international patients 
whenever people are traveling and they just want to go to Dayland Mall and they're not a patient, they're welcome to stay there also. Right. Uh, but uh, but they have something special done for when it's an international patient. So a lot of compassion. That's real, really great compassion. to hear. And, and people who are listening in, they've seen both sides of the coin. Yep. <laughs> and, and and that's the reason why they can talk about it because, you know, I, I say, you know, we, we, we've been through a lot of that hurry up, get them through, roll them out kind of idea. And it's great and reassuring to hear that there's a caring level outside of the business of medicine. And and like it or not, you know, this is a human business with human mistakes, right? So you can do everything right and get to take care of the patient and the patient does well and then they go home and everybody forgets. And then there's that one bill Mm -hmm. that comes to the patient's home that maybe somebody didn't zero out something that should have been zeroed out. Okay. But it gets to a patient's home or they gets to their email. And, and then we actually have a team that's dedicated for financial issues that actually an international patient can call our financial team. And, and they say, you know, I have this problem. I already paid for this, but they're still charging me for mm-hmm. it. And we have a team just dedicated for that. So I like to say our team is, we're not autonomous. We're part of the Baptist main umbrella and the corporate and, and, but we are actually self-sufficient. So we have our own finance team that help for patient finance situations for international patients. It's really great and reassuring to hear that, folks. Uh, We're going to take another break and come right back and start uh, rolling on uh, through because I think uh, our listeners would like to know a little bit more about some of the, I want to say, the newer aspects of what you guys are doing over there. I know we've just rolled out of COVID and there's a whole, um, I want to say, things that have been put on the back burner that now we're moving into forward. And we want to have that conversation about that. Excellent. Keep it right here. We are powered up by our friends over there at BAF Insurance. Uh, Each and every Wednesday we get together and talk about all things related to your health. My name is Chuck Taylor. Keep it right here. Hi, I'm Anne, supervisor at BAF Insurance, and I'm inviting you to take a look at BAF. For the past 12 years, I've had the pleasure of helping our members receive the best health care, working for a company that offers the best in affordable quality health plans. At BAF, we work overtime to ensure our members receive the best service available and we boast an enviable track record in settling claims quickly. It's the BAF way. So if you have already look, it's time to take a second look at BAF. Visit our website at bafcayman.com or give us a call at 949-5089. Our professional and knowledgeable staff are waiting to help you find the right plan to fit your needs. If you want coverage for life, choose BAF, they'll get it right. Today on Be Well, Be Healthy for Life, Lady K, your wellness coach, tells us about mosquito-borne disease. Mosquito bites can range from annoying and itchy to deadly. And the only way to be safe is to avoid a bite altogether. Today we look at some of the common mosquito-borne diseases and how to prevent them. Remember to like and share this video with a friend or relative. And while you're here, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Now, in the last decade, we've seen diseases such as dengue, Zika, or chikungunya sweeping through our population, with patients exhibiting symptoms such as fever, headaches, muscle pain, joint pain, and a rash. These ailments were all spread by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which can be easily recognized by black and white markings on its legs. It's also called the yellow fever mosquito because it can spread yellow fever as well. But why do they bite? Well, the females require the proteins obtained from the blood of humans and other animals in order to mature their eggs. And that's why they come in for a tasty meal from us. Mosquitoes are vectors, so they get the virus from an infected person, animal, or other mosquito, and then pass it on to us. Not all mosquitoes carry the pathogen that spread the diseases we mentioned before, but there's no way to readily tell which ones are infected, so it's best to protect yourself around the clock. Here are a few tips to help you prevent mosquito bites. Erect mosquito screens on your windows and doors, 
or if you already have them up, check them regularly for any breaks or damage and quickly repair them. Use insect repellent containing DEET whenever you're outdoors. Wear long sleeve clothing. Remove standing water and other mosquito breeding sites from around the areas in your home. Mosquitoes breed in stagnant water found in places like your drums, plastic containers, tires, flower pots, and old bottles and pans inside and around the yard. Get rid of those immediately. If you're planning a trip abroad, do a quick search to find out if there are any outbreak of mosquito-borne diseases so you can protect yourself accordingly. And if you have symptoms including fever, headache, muscle and joint pain, see your healthcare provider as soon as possible. Now, there's a common misconception that a person can catch diseases like dengue and chick V only once. That's not true as these illnesses have several strains. So, whether or not you've had it before, take the necessary precautions. Some people also believe that mosquitoes prefer certain blood types or only bite at certain times of day. There is no current scientific proof that either of these statements are true. While some species are more active at dusk and dawn, you can get bitten at any time of day. Remember, suit up by wearing the appropriate clothing outdoors. Spray up with repellent containing DEET and be sure to contact your doctor immediately if you feel you've been infected with a mosquito-borne disease. Be well, be healthy for life is brought to you by BAF Global Group. Remember, always consult your doctor before starting any new health and wellness regimen. BAF Global Group offers life, health, and general insurance, plus a full suite of financial solutions in the Bahamas, life insurance in the Turks and Caicos Islands, and affordable individual and group health insurance in the Cayman Islands. Visit us at mybafsolutions.com. I'm free to live my life, yeah, free to be me, yeah, the way I want to be, doing the things that I want to do, cause I'm living my life, hey, be a life, yes I'm living my life, hey, be a life, 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 yeah, has got you covered. Welcome back. My name is Chuck Taylor, and we are um, talking about your health, all things related. Compliments for our friends over there at BAF Insurance. I have uh, with us uh, from, um, I, I want to call it, because you said the pineapple. People may not understand the significance of that, but uh, Doc, tell them about the pineapple and how you guys came into that, and then let's move into some technology talk. So Baptist Health South Florida uh, has the pineapple as its as its its brand mm -hmm. and there's many baptist health all over the united states but it's not all connected so the way you know it's baptist health south florida is you're going to see the pineapple and the pineapple is actually one of from from way back when it's always been a symbol of hospitality and so that's what we, what we the the founders of baptist health and everything wanted wanted the uh, Baptist Health to represent a place that even though you were in a hospital, you didn't feel like you were in a hospital. So, right. And you were you were you felt happy, not that you were there, you know, you're dealing with a medical condition, but at the same time you felt comfortable. I Dr. Ruth, I will say I've been to Baptist Hospital several times, whether it was visiting family or, or myself there, and I always walked in and felt like I was in either a hotel or or I felt like I was in, in a business office. I didn't feel like I was there for what I was there for. I, I felt, you know, it, it, it was not that clinical doctor's office with the 10 magazines that's from like seven years old and you're going through and say, oh, okay, wow, this is from 19, you know, 29, you know, whatever it was, you felt like you were someplace that was inviting, someplace that was, um, up to normal you, you you didn't feel like i was sitting down waiting for a procedure i felt comfortable you have some of the most comfortable chairs i fell asleep in them many <laughs> times <laughs> you know but but it was it was never a fact that i felt like i was in a doctor's office so being a, a 
it's a private but it's non for profit system. The beauty of it is we have no stockholders. So whatever is invested in into Baptist Health and whatever comes out of it is reinvested into the system. Uh, I know we're going to get into technology in a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, you know our our bosses always say, you know, we got all the technology in the world, we build the best buildings in the world, and but what really makes the difference is the people inside the building. True. And so um, from the first moment that you meet somebody, when you walk through a door, you, you see a sign that says director of first impression. Mm -hmm. Because that person that's behind, the, somebody might call him a secretary, somebody might call him an assistant, but somebody at Baptist had the wherewithal to think about that's the first face that somebody's looking for help is going to look at. Right. And so they called it the director of first impression. And so those are the little things that I believe uh, make the difference. <clears throat> um, and we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect in this world. Of course. But, but the fact that they're able to then you have the, the people component within the system, but then reinvest into the system the technology. We were the first to have a Da Vinci robot at, but, in but, all but, South Florida. All right. Hold, hold on. You, tell them what a Da Vinci robot is and wh what... What the, I, I want to say, the things that it can do. So the progression of surgery, it started with open surgery. And then from open surgery, they created this thing called laparoscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. Laparoscopic surgery was basically you were using two utensils. And, and basically it had, it was the first thing that was connected to a camera. Right. But you were always looking in two dimensions. Yeah. All right. But then uh, you can actually go in. The advantage is you don't have to stick your hand inside, but you can actually use the actual um, the two rods that you're holding on to, and you can use it to suture, you can use it to move, you can use mm -hmm. it to cauterize and all that. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem, apologize, mm -hmm. the biggest problem we had was that you have to make calculations when you're using that. So when you... Up is down and down is it's up, up. It's and then reverse and it's reverse, reverse. <laughs> and you're trying to make all these decisions, but at the same time, you're not trying to cut the wrong tissue. You're trying to make sure you don't cut a a, a nerve or an artery and have a bleed, mm -hmm. and you're doing these calculations at the same time. So now comes in the Da Vinci robot comes in. It was the first actual machine robot that gave the surgeon magnification, three mm -hmm. D look. Uh huh. And at the same time, it gave the surgeon their wrists. Yeah. So when you're operating, you use your wrists. You got You almost have a 360 motion. You have a 360 motion. You can get around. You can push. You can pull. You can tug. You can, and so that's what the Da Vinci gave the doctor, the surgeon, that power of the, of the mobility of the wrist function. And then on top of that, it had the ability of magnification. So you, you can actually make sure to see it especially in prostate cancer, right? Okay. When you have, you magnify and you're looking at the little nerves and the little arteries that if you nick that nerve, that person could be incontinent for the rest of their life. Okay. If you nick that artery, they can have other situations in their life that, you know, maybe lose certain situations with uh, um, uh, mobility factors. and things yeah, of that ability nature. Ability right? to function, everything else. So, so now that comes into play, and then on top of that, you're able to then suture and do everything in such a magnified way that first the, the GYN oncology, the urologists were using, now everybody's using it. We have a doctor named Dr. Mark Tuluski, one of four in the United States that can do what he does with a robot. He can set up the robot, go into your chest, remove a mediastinal tumor, which is a mediastinal tumor is a tumor inside your thorax, okay, close to your lungs, and actually remove it, put it in a bag, take it out through the bottom of the abdomen, and never have to have a chest tube. Wow. Never cr break open your chest, and then you can go home in four days. That's pretty impressive, so to say it's, the it's, least. So then for, you move from there, and then you have the robotic surgery for orthopedics. We were the first to have an... Um, a robot, a Mako robot for orthopedics. And with that technology, with the cardiac side, we were the first to be working with Philips with many things. First right of refusal with Siemens, Philips, GE. Uh, we had the first Revolution CT, which was a CAT scan with 512 slices. 
the first time it came out, uh, the first place in all of the U.S. that was selected was Baptist Health. Believe it or not, all the U.S., not Boston, not New York, not anywhere, Miami, Baptist Health. And it was because, number one, the volume. We represent a population around us that we can service between Dave Brown and Pop. It's about 6 million people. Okay. So volume, it, that, that gives you expertise because you have the amount of procedures that you have to do. And then expertise and know-how together give you a high capacity so many people will want to come. And that's why now we're getting so many of the top-notch surgeons that are coming to us to work with us and the top-notch doctors because now they not only want to be part of something that's being built to a higher level, but also to participate in something that they can now do research. We are now affiliated with FIU University. Okay. FIU, Florida International University, started the Herbert Wertheim School of Medicine. We started already many uh, 11 years ago, uh, 12 years ago, we started with uh, family practice residency. Now we just signed an agreement with uh, FIU and Baptist Health that we're going to be having 200 and something plus residencies by 2029. So now there's going to be new. You're going to have home, homegrown, homegrown, right. home cooking, home cooking right there from your own gene and, pool within and imagine the many folks that can obviously you got to go through the same process you got to match you got to do all your tests and all that stuff mm -hmm. but if you do all that and you come from another country and you get to do that and then you're able to go home and then now you still have that relationship back home of who taught you right right exactly wow pretty so. impressive great great things on the horizon and always moving forward with uh technology with the community um great things if you had to tell somebody who was in need of services in Baptist Hospital, how can they reach out to you? So uh, at Baptist Health, the international department has one email, which is international at baptisthealth.net. Uh, we have one phone number in Miami, 786-596-2373. But we also have Baptist Health Cayman office. So we have an office here in Cayman. I'm going to pull up the number right now because I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> exactly. Folks, and and the, the great thing about this is that it is right around the corner. And when I mean right around the corner, whatever referrals you need, whatever information that you questions that you need to go ahead and ask, they have the answer for them. It's literally at the touch of their fingertips. And they have great access to a multitude of other, um, I want to say, extension arms of the family that allows them to give you the right information, whatever it may be. And the phone number three three four five seven four nine three three zero four three three zero four. 349 That's 345 uh, We have an office with amazing personnel there is able to help you. The purpose of the office, if you have any questions, if mm -hmm. at any time you have a bill or something, is to actually service the patients. Have have somebody you can reach out to, not go into some uh, enigma that you don't know how to solve a problem. Exactly. And p people here will tell you, we've been on the phone for hours trying to get information on an international call. Yeah. It's not pretty. <laughs> well, that's what the, the office is there for, not only to do PET CTs, because we do PET CTs and CT scans Okay. at our office. Uh, we do regular scans uh, and we do contrast scans and but it's also an administrative office, which is a direct link to our office back in Miami. Perfect. So it's it's a, it's an extension of us, and just like we believe that Cayman is an extension of our community, and we're extension of Cayman. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Rivas, for stopping by here today and um, giving us a, a broader view, because I know a lot of people who have heard of Baptist Health uh, before didn't know the extension of it, didn't know the vast network that you have access to, and also the the homegrownness and the honesty of it. So thank you so much for stopping by here today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. Thank excellent, you. excellent. Keep it right here as we roll on through. My name is Chuck Taylor. Uh, we're going to take our final break right here and uh, enjoy yourself. Be good to one another. And always uh, keep listening right here. Compliments of our friends over there at BAF Insurance. This program is brought to you as a community service of BAF Insurance. The views, opinions, and advice expressed by guests on this show are those of the guests and do not reflect the views, opinions, and advice of BAF Insurance. For medical advice, please visit your medical professional. 
Your health, your wealth, your health, your wealth, your health for life.